everybody. Today is Friday, November 16th, 2018, and the uh, market lost a little bit of ground here this week. Um, and that really wasn't a surprise as we got up to the 61.8% retracement in the SPY. But uh, now we have to look at what's uh, likely going forward. We have a holiday shortened week next week, and that's typically a bullish uh, period for the markets. But as I've said before, typically doesn't pay the bills. Uh, stock prices do. So where we are at the end of this week is we're still below a declining 50-day moving average. That's that green line. And the declining 200-day moving average. And just below the year-to-date volume-weighted average price. That isn't something that indicates buyers have a lot of confidence in this market. So we have to continue to be uh, cautious here. The daily time frame, if you just took it by itself, it would support lower uh, stock prices. Let's look at an intraday time frame, this being the 15-minute time frame. And what I have here is a volume-weighted average price off the October low. I've got the volume-weighted average price off of the uh, November high and the November low. And what you can see here is that we're possibly, on the intermediate-term time frame, trying to transition. Now, we've still got that five-day moving average declining, and uh, that tells us that we can't trust this rally. So... For next week, really, this is going to be the key band of resistance the market needs to get back above. What I would prefer to see happen, and the market doesn't care what I want, is a rally up through that quickly. And then for the market to, to break back down into, so uh, let me start that over again, to rally up through this level, come back down, and then let that five-day moving average flatten out and kind of do this, and then maybe get going higher. That would build a more stable base for it to rally from. But I'm afraid that the uh, the risk is that we break back below really 271, 271 and a half and continue that downward trend. That is currently on the daily time frame, the path of least resistance. You can't trust this market. So continue to be very cautious. Take each stock based on its own merits. And when you trade stocks or even just the market with all this volatility, you really have to take things slower. Uh, that means the smaller share size, unless you're a super aggressive day trader, most people are not going to be able to make money in this type of environment, so you have to go slow. The NASDAQ is still below the volume-weighted average price from the October low. That's that blue volume-weighted average price, and it's also below the volume-weighted average price from the November peak. We also see a declining five-day moving average here, and we also, though, are above this uh, volume-weighted average price from this week, so it tells us it's trying to neutralize a bit. Back below 166, I think this market has problems. Let's go back to that daily time frame for a moment because we can see here in this market, we are also below that 50-day moving average. That's that green line. We're also below that 200-day moving average, which is flattened out. We're below a 20-day moving average. We're below the year-to-date volume-weighted average price. These are things that tell us the sellers are in control. And when we look at that weekly time frame, after the magnitude of the rally we've had, it wouldn't be a surprise to see this market come back down and maybe settle in near the volume-weighted average price from the election and the uh, lows that we had seen earlier in this year. Um, looking at a, uh, the SPY, go back to that for a moment on the weekly time frame, you can see here that we continue to have problems with the uh, trend line that was broken here, and perhaps the volume-weighted average price from the election is a realistic uh, expectation for this market as well. Back to the NASDAQ on an intraday time frame, you know, the, the potential for bullishness, I think, would occur uh, really above this band of resistance. If that were to happen, then we could look for maybe a little bit of a rally up towards, so let's say, the 200-day moving average. I don't think that would turn this market around, but it would certainly be something that would be worth trading if if you're uh, able to to look at the market on a uh, a close basis. The um, that is from your time frame. The Russell 2000 still acting weak. We've got uh, the declining 50. That's the green. The declining. 200, that's black, the year-to-date volume-weighted average price, and the declining 20-day moving average. Down to a 15-minute time frame here, there are little signs that maybe this market is finding some stability here. We have that five-day moving average still declining, so you can't trust it yet. But the volume-weighted average price off of the October low and the November high we're closing above. That's good to see, as well as above the VWAP from this low. So it's going to remain tricky. I don't think that uh, you know anyone who 
shouts a real, uh, you know, strong opinion of what the market will do in here, be very careful listening to them because there's so much uncertainty from the different time frames that you really have to just look at this and realize that uh, your best bet, as always, is to manage risk. This is an environment where you can get hurt badly and hurt, hurt quickly and badly. Semiconductors actually didn't do that bad for the week, considering uh, what we saw today with um, – uh, NVIDIA. So let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA was down basically 38 points. And on the weekly time frame, it's blown past the year, the uh, volume weighted average price from the election. The bigger level probably is the volume weighted average price from when this move actually began in mid-2015. Mid um, back to the daily time frame, you know, we've broken all levels of support. And this again shows us why we're always cautious with a declining 20 50 and 200 day moving average news and surprises tend to follow the direction of the trend and you might look at nvidia and say but it's a good company or whatever but the fact is it's not a good stock to own for the last uh, six to nine months uh you know really since may you know everyone from that area in fact for this year is now down on the stock as we're down year to date in nvidia which had been a big winner so uh back to the semiconductors they were affected with that gap lower however they were not you know smashed as a lot of people might have expected with nvidia down now we still have a bearish picture here don't don't uh, you know read too deeply into it relative strength does not mean you're making money in a bearish environment it means you're losing less and we're not in the business of losing money we want to make money so we focus on risk management and saying you know can you really make good money in in, in this type of market where uh we have a gap lower a gap lower a run up a gap higher and decline i mean it's just a giant as my friend jc perrett says it's a giant hot mess and it is really you know if you're going to try to navigate between the raindrops in here then you know that's your time frame but I'd su suggest that for the semiconductors, you stand on the sidelines at a minimum. The biotechs came down and, uh, you know, found support just above the prior low. Well, I can't really say support. We found a bounce from there. And, you know, the potential bearish scenario is we continue to rally up a little bit and then come back down because that weekly time frame, you know, still suggests maybe a trend line test at least. We are holding the, uh, the lows for the year and the volume weighted average price from the election. We've got this longer term trend line that's just below. So maybe the, the biotechs are just dead money in here. The uh, financials actually held up, uh, you know, relatively better here for the week. Uh, the financials were, were down 1.2%. And still down doesn't mean a good thing, you know, down 1.2%. Yeah, it's not as bad as losing 3%, but it's not making money and we're in the markets to make money. The 15-minute uh, time frame we'll look at here again with the volume-weighted average price off the October low, off of the November high, and off the recent uh, November low. You can see we're trying to hold above those. We've got a little bit of a band of resistance right in here at 25, 27-ish, rather, that looks like it might have the potential to, uh, if it got above that, uh, provide a little bit of uh, you know further relief. But you have to consider where has it come from. You certainly wouldn't buy, want to buy uh, above that level unless it got above that level like this that is to consolidate underneath create higher lows see that five-day moving average rally up then perhaps you would want to purchase with a stop underneath that five-day moving average but again indecisive the multiple time frames are giving us different messages and different messages tell us either avoid it or shorten your time horizon energy stocks came down to the uh, prior low some people will call this a double bottom as I pointed out in the NASDAQ, we didn't know that this was a double top until we broke down right here. If we're looking for a double bottom in the XLE, this would be the double bottom. This would be point A, B, C, and then breaking above that would be where the double top is complete. I'm sorry, double bottom is complete. But again, we have to look at the direction of the 20, the 50, the 100, the 200 day moving average are all trending lower. And if they don't scare you out, they typically wear you out, meaning if they didn't shake you out, if you didn't have stocks, stops on the way down, it'll often take a lot of time for those markets to heal before recovery can come again. 
So be careful with this market. Um, Apple, I pointed out that a, you know, a potential level, if this, if Apple Apple continues lower here, uh, it might potentially continue down towards the 180 to 181 level. A couple of reasons for that. One, we had this prior resistance, which did turn into support in June. That has the potential to become support once again. We saw the uh, Fibonacci off of the, the year-to-date range. So from the February high, low to the uh, recent high, 61.8% brings us down to that level. And then the other level that I was uh, looking at was this trend line on the weekly time frame that goes back to 2016. You can see that that trend line uh, you know, hit right here and then again. And that's right around in that 180 level as well. So uh, that we don't have evidence that the buyers are back in control of uh, Apple yet. So continue to be cautious overall.